Hey, welcome back to Season 2 of TK's A Brigade. That's right, I'm your host, TK, and I've been on the Friends series now for a while with my best friend and co-host, Chris. And recently, we were able to sit down with a mutual friend of ours from back in the day, Mr. Eric Timebomb Cox. He was the drummer for Switchback, the rock band that I was part of and the whole crew pretty much hung out with. And we were able to sit with him on a Facebook conference call, so the audio is not the best, so bear with us in that. But the stories that we got to talk about, I think, were pretty cool. And we got to share some of our memories with each other and just how we remember things from back in the day. So we're going to tune in right now and listen in with Time Bomb about the good, the bad, and the ugly here on TK's A Brigade. Time Bomb and Doe, we're talking about 97 through 2000. Um, I asked both of them what was their most memorable gigs that we did in Switchback. Uh, Eric, you brought up Rawlings. Uh, why don't you like, give me a little insight on the Rawlings gig because I remember that gig well. And I know Chris wasn't at it, so we'll get his input here in a minute. But what do you remember the like? What do you remember about Rawlings? I'll make it as quick as I can. But the first, I just remember we were supposed to go twice. First right. time we, we had it booked and we had it scheduled, my lung collapsed. We didn't make it. Um, so then after I healed up, things started going good. Our agent, our agent, if you want to call her that, she, <laughs> sorry about the air quotes there. She, uh, she booked us back up there again in Rollins, Wyoming, okay? Yep. Well, we didn't know it was a country bar. And <laughs> I think we knew what, you know, a George Strait song and Sean could, you know, fumble his way through a couple songs. We're not, we weren't a country band, far from it. Um, so we, we got up there, we played one whole set every country song we could think of the holy blues brothers i mean it felt like blues we thought chicken wire but you know beer bottles are going to be thrown at us they weren't happy there's a there's a pretty big crowd there like a wedding happened or something and we played every country song we could think of and about halfway through the second set i just remember shelly coming up to us and saying you guys better start playing some good country they said they're going to fire you so Oh, wow. Dave kind of looked at Sean, and Sean looked at me, and we all kind of looked at each other. And Sean goes, okay, uh, we're going to do, let's do uh, Iron Maiden. <laughs> it's like, if I'm going to go out, I'm going out my way. So we did Trooper by Iron Maiden. Just start rocking it. And I mean, not even 30 seconds in, Shelly comes running over. Stop, stop, shut it off. They fired you. And we're like, thank God. We want to get out of here. So it was just, it was the only time I'd ever been fired from a show, but we did it our way. We went out our, our way. That so, makes it worth it. Absolutely. So to elaborate on that story a little bit, here's the funny thing. That was the second night because the first night we played to an empty bar and oh, you were right. Yeah, we played to an empty bar and the bar owner came, come over to us and he's like, Hey guys. I think you're too quiet. I want to hook up my sound system instead of yours, which we had 12s and 15s. He had 15s and 18s. Yeah. And yeah. so we unplugged our subs and we plugged his subs in and his his mids and highs. The party that you're referring to, it was it was half of the party was 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 all the um uh the the prison guards from the prison and the other half was from a bank hmm. in town. I don't remember oh, that. Boy, you got oh, a good yeah. memory, buddy. He's got a killer oh, memory, dude. dude. <laughs> and he does. Okay, because the because the I just remember movie. cowboy hats and cowboy boots and thought, oh great. <laughs> I have never seen the only there's only one other time that I've ever seen you as angry as you were that night when Shelly came up to the stage and was like, guys, either you start playing some damn Yankees or something like that, or this this crowd is gonna freaking leave. And so I remember cranking the mains like plus four, right? And that song, you guys all, that was one of the songs where you guys all started at the same time. I mean, it, dude, people were jumping out of their chairs and they were running for the door, literally leaving the bar. And David's in the mic, you take my life. And I mean, he's screaming those lyrics into the mic. That's and probably Sean, the best we ever played that song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys were killing it. <laughs> right 
And yes, and the bar owner and Shelly come flying up to the stage and was like, cut it off, stop, no, no. And by the time you guys like stopped actually playing, three fourths of the bar had cleared out. And that dude refused to pay us. He owed us oh, $700. Yeah. Yep. And I remember um, Tom came to me and he's like, Hey, Tiny, can you go talk to the bar owner? Because he's not, he told Shelly that he's not going to pay us since he fired us. And I said, Oh, no. We came up here in January in freaking sub zero temperatures in four different vehicles. And we played to a bar that we would never have booked on our own because this is not our style of music. And we fulfilled what we were here to do. And we would finish what we were here to do. You are not allowing us to. You're paying us. So I remember him going in the back, begrudgingly, came out with an envelope and counted out what he owed us. And we go back did, to the did room. Did he pay us, but he kept out the agent's part or said she's not yeah. going to get paid or something? Well, he, he said, I will take care of what I owe your agent. Here's what I promised you guys. I'll pay her what I, what I <laughs> promised to pay her. So yeah. the funny thing is we go back to the room and we're all pumped up. We're all pissed <laughs> off. Sean says, so Sean goes back. He says, I, I forgot something in the bar. I'm going to go back to the bar. Do you remember this? He oh, comes this back. his bathroom? His mysterious guy he beat up in the bathroom? Yes, yes, he remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Because we thing. all went to the bathroom looking for this body. And it was like, there's nothing here. I so wish I would have so, been there. So Sean <laughs> yeah. comes back to the room after going back to the bar because he said he forgot something. <laughs> comes flying into, into one of the hotel rooms and we're all posted up. He's like, he starts doing this. And he's like, dude, I, got, I just got into a fight, man. I knocked this guy out, bro. There was blood everywhere. And the guy's just laying there unconscious. And we all looked at each other and we're like, what? And he's like, yeah, man, this guy started talking trash and saying we sucked. So I just knocked him out. So we all go back down to the bathroom. <laughs> right, Eric? Yeah, I remember this. And trying to find this guy. And dude, there's no guy. There's no blood splatter on the walls. Shocking. There's no dude knocked out. Well, he tried to play it off. And he was like, oh, they must have cleaned it up already. <laughs> so, was it 99 or 2000? I want to say, was it before or after the CD release party? I want to say before. I thought it was 99. Okay, I think you're right. Okay. So, all right. Cause, so cause, here we are. Because my, gig- my long issue was in 98, and it was like a year later that we went back up there. Do you remember the Wheaton gig on New Year's Eve? Because I know Chris was at that one. Yeah, I know that one very well because Jerry I left my cymbals back at the recording studio. <laughs> I had I to drive the four hour round back. trip to go get them. Yes. Do you remember that one, Chris? Do you remember that one up in Wheaton? Vague, it was on New Year's vague, Eve. Vaguely, I, I do remember uh, Jerry flipping out. Do you um, remember, Chris, that you brought a uh, a large quantity of um, party favors? This is why I remember the probably. Year. So we are we're all in the hotel room, and if anybody wants me to shut up now, I won't go any further. But <laughs> <laughs> it's all out. We there, were man. all in the you're hotel only room. You're incriminating yourself too, buddy. Uh, you're right. But we're all in the hotel room, and mind you, this is 23 years ago. Mm-hmm. But we're all in the hotel room, and I remember I remember Chris coming to the door, and and. Uh, Jerry's like, hey, Doe's at the door. And I was like, I just brought some party favor. And I was like, what? Dude, you pull out a freaking pool ball. Do you oh, remember that? I do. I do because uh, it was it was, uh, uh, it was was like a reward for everything I had moved for somebody. And he's like, here, this is your cut. And I was like, oh, I'm taking this. So I do remember that. <laughs> Tom and Shelly were like, you know what? We're just gonna go. We're not gonna. We're not gonna partake. But the rest of us partook, and we partook, and that was a fun show there in Wheaton, Wyoming. So, to hear a little bit more from was like, it in what, Wheaton Chris, or Wheatland? We uh Wheatland, Wheatland. Yeah. Sorry, Wheatland. Yes, uh, yeah, Wheatland. I do remember that. Yes, and you're right. You forgot your symbols. That sucked. I had to drive like four and a half, five hours round trip to go back get them. I showed up back at the place, put my symbols on, sat down, and we went. I mean, oh. I, that was it. I just barely made it back in time. So I want to hear more about what Chris and and Time Bomb remember about their interactions during that time because I I can sit here for a week and and share memories, but I would love to hear you guys just like what you two remember about those times. <laughs> what I can tell you is, is I'm going to make this man blush right now. 
I always, uh, I always looked at because this is an honest podcast. That's something we promised each other when we started this. Yep. And uh, I can tell you, I thought you were probably the coolest dude I have ever met in my life. I was like, this dude's laid back. Just, I don't know, man. And and the drumming thing, I, I don't know why I was so attracted to that. It's just a cool, uh, something I could never do, but it's wicked cool. And uh, I, uh, that's that's the one thing that's always stuck out to me is like, you know, and then and then finally, like today, um, this is the first time I've talked to you with the exception of, I think like a year ago or so, we were chatting a little bit, but it was on Facebook. Chatting, yeah. We've lost contact and it sucks, but it's, I mean, we got families, I get it. But um, yeah, I always thought you were like, the, so... Wow! Yeah, I that's am where I'm at. Look at that <laughs> put, put, uh, little pink over here. Hey, at least I'm not like other Switchback members, where my head's not too big to fit the screen now. Right. Um, well, <laughs> but no, you know, thanks, Chris. I I, I appreciate that because I don't know. It's kind of like you try to be nice to everybody and be cool to everybody because you never know when you're gonna run into them again, how you're gonna run into them again. You never, you know, they could become somebody way more important than you i mean you just you just gotta be cool and that's what i tried to do that's what i liked about you too bro is when you came in you didn't come in kissing our ass and you didn't come in trying to kick our ass if that makes sense <laughs> right you just came in you were real you were you and it was like there was an instant bond with you with, with for friendship because i was like hey you know this guy's cool he's just straight up front you're honest um i do remember a few times you Hey, time bomb! That part you do in that song. What if you changed it and did this? And 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 I love that. I Aww. love it when people do that because I was like, hey, I should try that. I'll try that. And and if I remember correctly, I want to say it was in time to pay your dues, and it was something that I did on the drums that I switched and never did it my way since. Wow! It was something something you told me to do with the kick drum. Um, it was like a little triple quad thing that you threw at me, and I, and I've been doing it that way to this day. If, if I sit down and play that song, which sometimes I still do, I gotta admit, put the headphones awesome. in and play. I still play it that same way that you suggested, and oh, that's cool. It's just I respected you enough to know that I don't care if this guy's never touched a, a, an instrument in his life. The way you approach me with that is nothing but respect, man. Oh, that's my heart's warm. I spent my whole oh, life my, not knowing that. My cheeks are still warm, so. We got some mushy, got some mushy <laughs> moments. I love it, man. I love it. All right. That's I got cool. a question Thank for you. you. I got a question for you, Eric. Switching gears a little bit. Uh, so I lived in the port. You lived right there in Fort Collins over there off of, what was the street you lived off of? I think it was um, it was Taft Hill and. It was up by Vine, I think. Vine, okay. It was you pretty had, close to you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because I would I would find a way over to your house, and then we would jump in your gray. What was your car? Like celebrity your or car Caprice or one of those old police cars. Yes. Yeah. It, it had a tape deck. <laughs> yeah. And we had two tapes that we would rock out like stupid freaking like schoolgirls all the way to Loveland. What What were the two songs or two records that we would listen to all the time? Well, I know one of them is like, I'm almost embarrassed to say it. But one of them was Selena, man. That yes! did rock. What? Yes, she, what? Selena was oh, badass. What song? Oh, what song? All I got to listen to this. Bro. Dude, go ahead, the, go ahead. The, the, the Selena stuff was is in the heart, man. It was from the heart. Travis and I both, you know, just single young dudes trying what to song? figure out what's going to happen in our life. What What was the name of that? It's it's the love song that. Yeah. It's it's the what? one it's it, it's her, it was her first crossover song that she ever did in English. Correct. Um, if I heard it, I'd be like, "That's the one," but I can't think of oh, the I, name. I, can, I could sing it, but I'm not going to because my throat hurts. But um, <laughs> uh, but the funny thing was, it, 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 years later, what I always remember that, or what I was always reminded by, was when um, in the movie Tommy Boy, when Chris Farley and um, what's his other, the other dude, they're they're driving down the, the road. And that one song comes on and they're both like, well, he's like, I don't care if you leave it here, we can listen to this. And he's like, okay. And then the next scene, they're both yeah. singing and they're like, and like crying. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. And we never cried, but we would sing along and then we would listen to another band. What Do you remember the other band, which was I one of your I can't remember. Favorites. Selena was just so powerful. I mean, that her music, everything, <laughs> the way we were in our lives at that time, we were this, 
badass band members, rock and roll love? studs. But yeah, that's it. So the, the other one, the other one was Eddie and the Cruisers. Oh, how could I forget Eddie? I still, he's still my hero. Right. And we used to talk about that. We used to talk about after we'd listen to these two songs, Chris, this then song? we would talk about our dream of moving to Tennessee. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> that's it, bro. That's you it. both at the same time. <laughs> oh. That's so oh, odd. Awesome. You guys man. both right. at the same time, your faces lit up like <laughs> it was Christmas. That song will never get old. I will never forget those trips because that is a legendary song by a legendary artist. That was one of my favorite memories of ours. Now, another memory of ours driving down to rehearsal was that Eric loved to smoke vanilla cigarettes and camel fatties. Okay. My sister and my brother both, whenever I talk about you, Eric, and I and the first thing Joshua always says is, Does he still smoke those vanilla cigarettes? And this first thing Janelle says is, Does he still smoke camel wides? But oh. it's funny because that's one of those things that's synonymous with Time Bomb was just the vanilla cigarettes. And that's yeah, I, I just that's awesome. Yeah, the ordinary was never good enough for the time bomb. Didn't you smoke cloves too? <laughs> no, I hate cloves. Hey, always hated those. Somebody did. I want to say somebody did. I think Dave did actually. That, that I think might Dave be who Sunny it was. Did. Yep. Dave. It was a it was a sunny thing, and then Dave started doing it. I think. Oh, sunny, bro. Oh, I know. I haven't I heard that about her, man. Yeah, oh, I don't. God. I don't know what. I don't know what ever happened to her, but she was a pretty cool chick. I liked her. She, she was, was cool. cool. I, yeah, yeah. She was always just really mellow. She didn't really cause any drama like Shelly. And I'm not picking on Shelly. I'm just being honest. Like with when Tom wasn't loud enough in the mix, and she'd yep. come over to me and she'd get in my ear and she'd be like, "You need to turn Tom up." It's like. Listen, I understand, but you know what? When I'm getting dirty looks from Sean from the stage because it's uh, it's feeding back because he he liked to play his little guitar amp with a mic to it because it didn't have an out, so we had yeah. to mic his amp, and everything else on stage was so loud that we couldn't I couldn't maintain a stage volume without creating feedback. Do you guys remember playing oh, up boy. at the region? Yep. Is that the Carter Lake place? Yes. And we played there a few times because I remember yeah. my right. family, my parents and my cousin who I hang out with now here in Minnesota was visiting at one of those Windjammer shows. Do you remember the the very last time that we ever got booked there? And do you remember why we never got booked again? I don't know. Did Chris beat somebody up? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I'm I, gentle as a fly. <laughs> I, I, no. Hey, if you ever beat anybody up, either of you two, it's only because you were looking out for us. And I love you for that. Uh, both of you. Oh, we've roughed so, up some people. That's for sure. Good. Yeah. We yeah, love we you did. for it. That was the night I learned how to, to eliminate feedback in the mix. This uh, engineer that used to tour with, not the Fray, it was another big band from Denver. Oh, Big Head Todd and the Monsters. But this oh, guy yeah, was an yeah. engineer for them. And he said, I said, he come up to me, I remember after the first set, and he goes, do you want to know how to eliminate that feedback? Because it's right at 4K. He said, yank 4K out of your EQ mix and you won't have feedback anymore. And I was like, okay how do you know that he, so he tells me i'm like okay but the reason that was a that was a monumental because then i didn't get yelled at from the stage anymore but the reason <laughs> we got fired from that gig or from playing there ever again was david got drunk after we loaded out decided Did he steal to, something he yeah. stole alcohol from the back didn't he yes he stole uh. two bottles of bushnell he stole two bottles of crown royal and he stored four bottles of jack daniels and Whoa. put him in his truck. I, his, his, now, I remember that now. Yep. Yeah. God, you're bringing up memories strong. that are wow, wow. They're you're way up deep in there. Like, I don't know if I want to laugh or cry or both. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Stunny and Sean found out, and they made him take it back up there and just like drop it off. But they knew we took it. Well, we they knew somebody in our group took it, and they yeah. never took it again. God, I forgot all about that. Yeah. Do you remember about, anything about that, Chris? I don't didn't know anything about that at all. It's pretty funny to me, actually. It, it does I, not I mean, surprise it's, me. It's, exactly. I was just to say because it doesn't. It sounds like something that would happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dave was a, a genius. He was a certified yeah. genius, but he was. It's kind. So are serial killers. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, no, he, he was not, very he was very intelligent. We probably still is very intelligent, but yeah, when you're super yeah. intelligent like that and you start adding liquor to the mix. If he's still alive, yeah. It dumbs you down a little bit and makes you crazy. Yeah. Well, he actually started playing guitar before Switchback was actually officially a band. I don't know if you remember that. And yeah. we were like, we need a bass player. And David's like, okay, I'll play bass. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he still wanted to play guitar all the time on, on right. all the shows. So. Right. 
But Tom's like, no, 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 that's my job. And yeah. uh, yep. do you remember the night in the studio in Jay's basement when you guys were screwing around and there was copious amounts of things being smoked that caused a <laughs> smoke alarm to go off? I do. Oh, yeah. That. It's, it's on the CD. Right. And yep. David's banging his bass against it and everybody's screaming at him to stop. That <laughs> yep. started That started time to pay your dues. Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah, boy. Oh, my, well, my oh. dad, for her dad, he thought it was a, he thought it was a mistake in the recording. I was like, no, dad, we meant to put that in there for a little bit of, you know, a little humor, whatever you want to call it. A little juice. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. All right. So final question for both of you. Final TP party that Switchback played, I believe it was in 2000. Do you guys remember that particular uh, TP party? Or if you just have random memories of the TP party, I would love both of your inputs as far as that, those parties, because those and the bitch and bash were two of like iconic parties with our crew. So if you guys just have some random stories, please just as we continue yeah. and, and finish up, just, yeah. The TP party was Sean's mom's place, right? That was the bitch and bash. The TP party was strawberries up on strawberries. Yeah, it's up on strawberries, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, that was just our life and our time. Like we I you know, my family came out here from Iowa. It was uh it was kind of a free for all. And then we all just met and it was just like, Oh, let's go have fun and just enjoy every aspect of life that we can and not really think about it. So if it can go in your lungs or in your nose, we're gonna do it. That that's <laughs> That was true. That's so, totally all right, true. Chris, real quick, what do you remember? Give me like a, a good story about uh, Sean's uh, bitch and bash. Like, what do you remember about Sean's bitch and bash? And then I'm gonna ask you the same thing, Eric. Right. I, don't, I don't know. Um, uh, no sobriety. Very. I, I honestly, I don't know. I couldn't. T I couldn't tell you. The only thing that I remember is um, uh, Uncle Pat, his dog Pete, um, <laughs> your mom's incident, um, uh, Jugs being there. Okay. Um, <laughs> trying to get people to stay in my tent with me. Who, who is that? Are we referring back to Jugs or what? Anyone? I did try to get Jugs in my tent like ten times, and she never. I knew she it. Would never I go. Knew it. <laughs> she would never go. I'm just your friend, Chris. She was. She was more scared than anybody. I don't know. That's about it. Like tons of tons of not being sober. I was just say those were the times that we probably forgot more of because. I mean, let's face it, we're all higher, drunk, or bold. Uh-huh. Fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about all uh, I could tell you. Okay, what about you, Eric? What do you, like, give me a, a memorable, like, uh, uh, bitch and bash party that uh, something happened at the bitch and bash that you can remember. Cold. People yes. forget that in the mountains it gets down to 35, 40 degrees at night. And I remember punching holes in my drums and using duct tape trying to cover everything back up. Yes. Cold. Yeah. My hands couldn't... You you remember when I used to tape my fingers? I yes. do remember that. I I do the back. I tape and then flip them over backwards for the sticky side. That yep. came about from those mountain nights because I couldn't hang on to the damn sticks. <laughs> that dude, I remember. That. That's when I start doing that. Is uh, and then I just became a habit. But cold, um, but just uh, I can't even explain the like total bliss of it all because. It's a bunch of people trying to have a, the time of their life, cold, drunk, high, all of the above, and nobody cared. No, um, very. I don't. I don't recall any fights with anybody. I'm sure there were arguments and little drunken. I would say you know, Brad and uh, his brother. Um, yeah, but they Brent, fought all the time. They, Brent, they always Brent. got in fights. <laughs> there, yeah, or Seth I mean, they, could fight with anybody. Seth, I mean, yeah. yeah. If Brad and his brother weren't fighting, something was wrong, you know? <laughs> That's a fact. Um, if, they, if they weren't throwing blows, we were all like, what's wrong? What's wrong, guys? You know? But, no, it just... I miss those times. I miss you guys. I miss those times. It's a time that I will never get back, but we'll always remember them. I'll never be able to do that again. I'm too old, too beat up. I'll never be able to do anything like that again. So, to honestly say some of the best times in my life, I wouldn't be lying. That's pretty true. I mean... I would agree. I don't remember. Again, it's one of those times where, at in the moment, I just wanted to play really well because that's I'm just very prideful in the way I played. I wanted to play well, perform well, give everybody a show they wanted. But at the same time, I don't remember the songs. I don't remember really playing. I remember the the breaks, smoking 
cigarettes and snorting stuff with you guys and and all the and just the bs and the talking and the just the friendship man that's that's what i remember all right i got a i got a story i want to see if you remember this story eric um okay. we, we played down in commerce city uh it was right around sean's birthday in 99 and it was another one of your uh corporate uh company parties and Sean had a gig up in Leadville that night. Do you remember this story? Oh, he got in the accident on the way there. So tell me what you remember about that. I don't I don't remember a whole lot other than Sean being Sean and did a bunch of stupid shit that after, before, during, and after the, <laughs> the gig that my company thing. And I, I do remember somebody telling him, hey, you need to slow down. We got rest of the day to do you got a long drive ahead of you blah 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 and from what i remember we just got the notification of phone call or i don't even remember how we were told but sean's not going to be here he's in, in a bad accident him and adrian they almost died and we all just freaked out because we didn't know what was going on um i don't remember much outside of just that initial reaction like what and the hell happened or they rolled the car and they flew off and off the interstate out into the ditch I, I sean brought me back and showed me the site like a few weeks after that but other than that i don't remember a whole lot okay okay so i'll i'll just i'll paraphrase the story so we had been we got a gig and we were playing it was a saturday it was for your bit for your company that you were working for mm -hmm. at the time it was a big like family corporate gig we went yep. down and played it well, Sean had booked a um, an acoustic gig up in Leadville. So him and Adrian and Jerry got in Adrian's uh, baby blue Ford Taurus yeah. and took half of the PA with them and drove to Leadville. Well, they ran out of tweak about 11 o'clock that night. And uh, on the way home, Jerry That's was- they did six eight balls during the day. <laughs> 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 that, that, okay, that is absolutely probably true. <laughs> but so they're they're driving back, and Sean and, and Adrian were asleep, and Jerry was driving, and Jerry fell asleep, and they oh, yeah, I they, they 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 yeah. launched off the road, flung uh, Adrian out the car. She she slid on her face fifty yards. Sean got flung out of the car, broke his leg, and the the mixing console was behind Jerry, and when they hit. It slammed Jerry into the uh, steering wheel and it put him in a coma. Oh, that's right. Yep, I do remember that. I'm, yeah, you'll have to forgive me again. No, no. That animosity Dude. towards one particular individual, I completely blocked that out. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been something I would have remembered for sure. <laughs> right. so, so what's crazy, though, is that, <laughs> that that changed the dynamic of the band. Because Forever. Sean, like, we all know that Sean had a huge ego. And, I'm, and, and Sean, you ever listen to this, bro? I'm, I'm not bagging on you. I'm just keeping it real because I think all three of us can agree that uh, you had a big ego. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was what made him him. Is what, it's it's yeah, part of what made him a great uh, musician, too. Yeah, right. if he didn't have right. that, it, I would wonder who he was. Yeah, because he was a talented, yeah. he's a talented musician. I'll give him that. Yes. However... I, and I say, however, is I remember that day so vividly because I remember him walking back to the car and Sean had this gait, the way he walked. And the leg that he broke that night was the leg that when he walked, he had this like, it was like a confident, cocky walk. And years later, I remember asking him, I'm like, you know, if you could go back in time and, and change things you know, in your life, what would you change? And he's like, I would have changed going to Leadville and not just staying up there that night after the gig instead of trying to come home because that changed my entire life because I almost died that night. And I remember mm -hmm. thinking to myself, okay, this is this has got to be a turnaround for the band because, I mean, we're getting, I mean, we we were doing gigs with the sub dudes. Do you remember the sub dudes, Chris? I don't. I know Time Bomb does. Oh, I remember them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. You remember? You remember? Uh, you remember the uh, X Men? Oh yeah, Eric. Oh yeah. I was <laughs> telling you the. I was just telling you a story the other day how I paid him back what we owed him after the band had broke up and everybody moved on. And we've got that on tape now. That so anybody ever ever tries to say that that <laughs> you didn't get taken care of, 
we're witness to that the fact that eric in fact held up and was integral and took care of that that debt to our to uh to x-men yeah we did talk about yes that. i did i did the right that's just the right thing to do man yes, right very true and we got and, and because of the subdued switchbike got invited to someone's house who did we get invited to go and hang joe out with? cocker and didn't we talk about this last week, Chris? Yes. And Chris, Chris is like, does everybody know who Joe Cocker is? I was like, yeah, go watch the Wonder Years. Go watch reruns of the 69 Woodstock. You'll know who Joe Cocker is. You are so beautiful. Uh, yeah, everybody knows that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not the way I do it, but. <laughs> do you remember our final gig, Eric? No, because I only remember sitting in the studio like a couple of days after that when I stood up and said, guys, I'm sorry, I'm done. I can't, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. But I don't remember the gig before it. The final gig that Switchback ever played as a band was Tailgate Tommy's in Fort Collins on the rooftop. Really? Fun, yep. Final gig. Because Eric, and the reason I remember this is because Eric wanted to throw his bass amp off the off of the side of the building. Oh, wow. And I said, hey, bro, I bought that amp for you. Don't You don't get to throw it off the side of the building. Well, technically, J.R. Medlin bought it, and I paid Medlin back. I said, like, you can't throw that off the building, bro. That's not your amp. You, you said Eric wanted to throw that. You mean Dave? No, I'm sorry. Did I say it? Yeah. No, Dave yeah. wanted to throw the bass amp off of the side of the building. And okay, I was like, that, okay. nah. No, you can't do that. God, that sounds like Dave, too. I mean, it uh, doesn't even surprise me. Not a <laughs> but, bit. But then you and I were living in... Uh, in Loveland, Eric, right? You remember when we lived together? On uh, 402 there? <laughs> do you, no, do I remember. You, do you remember? Okay, again, not bagging on Sean. And and Doug, that you're just kind of along for the ride for this one. But so Sean was such a slop that are you gonna Eric, bring are you going to the dishes thing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. He picks yes. it out right away. Yes. Sean yeah. would Sean was so slobby, like uh, there was a there was this woman. She was a blonde. She used to come to Archer's gigs. She was tall and skinny. Do you remember her? Her name was Shelly, and she would come to the bar on the weekends primarily, and she would hang out. She would come when bands would play. She was kind of a bar fly, but she was pretty respectful. But she came over one night. And Sean had made macaroni and cheese in a, in a pot and left the macaroni and cheese in the pot with the spoon in the pot. And you had come home, and he had he had drank he had drank your last Mountain Dew. Oh, that's fighting! Oh no! So Nobody the next touches day, my last Mountain Dew. The next <laughs> the next day, Chris, I went somewhere. I think Sean went and did something, and we come home, and Eric says, "You guys need to go in the kitchen and look." in this cupboard travis and this or tiny in this cupboard sean because you will find one fork one spoon one bowl <laughs> one plate and one cup and from now on when those are dirty you're eating off your hand and i remember standing there in the living room going dude seriously bro and, and eric was like and eric really i can remember bro like you were one of the most like what chris said laid back chill cats i have ever known in my life and i remember you're like i am tired of my mountain dew getting drank and i'm tired of cleaning up so i'm not blaming anybody but this is what we're doing and from then on until we moved out everybody got one plate one cup one spoon That's awesome. and dude it was yeah i mean the mountain dew and, thing and guess and of the three of us guess which one always ate off of dirty dishes gee <laughs> i wonder well, so that brings us to, I believe it was right towards the end of 2000, ooh, uh, 2001. You said, I think I'm out of here, guys. I think I'm going to Minnesota. Do you remember like when you made that decision? Yes, I do. I remember coming here for the job interview and all that stuff. And I just made up my mind. I'm, I'm gone. Because do you remember that I was actually still playing with Sean a little bit and Justin Romarine? Yes. You I remember do. that? Oh, in, yeah. that, in that same duplex you used to live in. I was yep. we were trying to get one more thing going. And it just didn't seem right. It just didn't seem to click. And that's when I said, nah, I'm out of here. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm, I'm, yeah. And you packed up your truck. I, I came outside and you were standing next to your truck. And I'm like, you're really doing it? And you're like, I have to, man. I have to save my life. Because we were so deep into uh, party favors. That season, man, there was no limits as far as when it came to like drug use and stuff. But it got to a point where like 
you were concerned that your other lung was going to collapse and you were like i can't do this anymore i'm like we're so mm -hmm. immersed in this in this lifestyle that i have to break away and i remember thinking to myself he's never coming back he's going to go to minnesota and he's never going to come back <laughs> you know my dad said the same thing <laughs> <laughs> really my dad had predicted that i was going to come to minnesota meet a girl the girl that i've been that you and i and selena had waited for Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, man, and start yeah. a family and then i wouldn't have a reason to come back right that is amazing and what's crazy is fast forward in 2022 i mean i have four kids what do you have two boys that are like almost teenagers eric yeah one is well 14 and 12 yeah two boys right and then and then doe has three three daughters yep. that one it just moved out recently and started college i think and then the other two yep. are uh, yeah. nine and four Right. I have a 14 year old, a 12 year old, a six year old, and a three year old. It's crazy. You I'm sluts. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's, uh, but well, that's, if you, you remember know, correctly, I didn't want kids. I never right, wanted kids. Do. I was terrified right. of kids. I, I didn't grow up with them. I didn't know how to use them. I didn't know how to treat them. To use <laughs> but them. I love it. <laughs> but they were all drawn. They're always drawn to me. Like people yeah. that don't like cats. The cats are always on their lap. That's how I was that's with true. kids. And then when I had my first kid, I was like, oh my God, I, I, I never knew I could love a creature like this. So. <laughs> I love a creature. I love it. I mean, that's, I, I love reminiscing with you guys. Um, I think that we're out of time today because I've got, uh, I've got some people that are coming home here soon from the pool, but I would love to catch up with you two again. Uh, and maybe we can reminisce about some other stories and some other times that we spent Let's together. Do part two. Oh, Let's yeah, do that'd part be awesome. two. I love both of you as, as brothers. I, I'm so Same. glad that we were able to get on today and just catch up and reminisce. It was awesome. Yeah. Good time. Love you guys. I miss you guys, man. It was definitely a good Sunday. That's for sure. That's cool. Yep. Thanks for having me, boys. Oh, it was a pleasure. It's definitely a pleasure. And I'm looking forward to getting Eric and Doe and I on another episode, part two. Uh, maybe we get him away from all that fishing he does. Oh. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> all that working. It's more like working. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, you know, I'm just, I'm being optimistic, so. Till next time. I don't like a bye, so I'm going to say see you later. All right. See, I love it. See you later. Well, we will talk soon. All right. Love you guys. Later. I love later. you, man. Later. There you go, folks. Eric Timebomb Cox, former drummer of Switchback, now a husband and a dad, living life, enjoying everything, sharing his memories with us, with me and Doe here on our friendship series, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Now, that was fun because I remember a lot from those times, and it's nice to have other people have perspectives and tune in and listen and then want to jump on, which is what Eric did, and that was super cool. I cherish those thoughts and those memories of back then because it was the good, the bad, and the ugly. And here we are 20 plus years later and we're getting to reminisce about it. So super cool. We are hoping to get a few more guests on with us. So if you're one of those that are listening and would like to jump on, please leave a like or comment. Share with us what you would like to talk about. We are open to reminisce about all that stuff, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You are listening to TK's A Brigade. I'm your host, TK, with my special co-host, Doughboy. You can like and subscribe on Anchor, Google, Spotify. Please leave a question or comment, and we will try to respond to you as quickly as possible. So we are out of time. Tune in next week as we continue down this road here on TK's A Brigade.